to die. Now at this point, some of you guys might be asking yourselves, why is this guy trying to teach us how to fall down? Is that even something you have any control over? Why did some dude just come out of nowhere and tackle him on a football field? Answers to all these questions and more coming right up. Now, first off, yes, falling down is absolutely something that you can do poorly if you don't have a lot of experience with it. And on the flip side, if you are able to get some practice in, there are a bunch of things that you can do in those split seconds while you're crashing down to the ground, even if it's happening in an unexpected way, that'll greatly reduce the amount of impact to your joints, your bones, and most importantly, to your head. Before we get into those techniques, one thing I have to say is that for a beginner, even more important than what you do while you're falling down is how you prepare for it beforehand. So I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record here, but the number one thing that's gonna protect you while you're skateboarding is gonna be a helmet. And then second is gonna be your elbow pads, your wrist guards, and your knee pads. Now knee pads in particular are gonna be even more useful whenever you're skating transition, but it's still a good idea to have them on for every type of skateboarding. And then the second piece of the puzzle is gonna be how you instinctively react whenever you do start to fall. As you start going faster and falling from higher up, you're not gonna be able to rely on your pads and helmet as much as before, so you need to develop your skills on what to do whenever you start to lose your balance, so that way you can cradle yourself down to the ground safely and prevent any type of serious injury. Now, depending on how new you are to skateboarding, it might not make sense why we're making such a big deal about this topic. You might think, you know, I'm sure it's a good idea to be good at falling down, but really, what are the chances that's gonna to happen to me? All I wanna do is be able to ride my skateboard on the sidewalk, and honestly, that looks pretty easy, so I probably don't even have to worry about it, right? Well, you, my friend, are in for a rude awakening because skateboarding is falling down. Sure, whenever you watch a skate video, you might just see the parts where the skateboarders stay on their boards just fine, but that's because they're editing out all the other parts before that where they absolutely ate it before they got it right. From the moment you step on a skateboard for the very first time all the way up to the pros, it is a guarantee that in order to learn anything new, you're gonna have to fall down first. And I mean like a whole bunch of times. So rather than just crossing your fingers and hoping for the best, right from the start, falling down should be the first thing that you practice how to do. And then that way you'll be able to learn everything else after that because you'll be able to handle the hits as they come, pop right back up and try it over again and again. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is go over the basic technique for falling down to the ground. So that way, whenever you're practicing on your own, you know what it is that you're going for. Okay, so no matter which way you're falling, whether it's forward, backwards, or to the side, there are a few things that you're gonna to wanna to try your best to do every time. So the ultimate goal that we're gonna be working on here is going to be learning how to absorb impact and protect your head. So probably the worst thing you can do whenever you start to fall is if you were to just panic and just kind of freeze up like a deer in the headlights and then you just fall to the ground without even trying to catch yourself on the way down. Rather than doing that, whenever you're in the middle of falling, if you still have your feet a little bit under you, what I want you to do is first use your legs to Try to cradle your momentum down to the ground a little bit and then also try to redirect as much of your downward momentum as possible to being sideways in whatever direction you can. You can look at it this way. If you're falling straight down, there's a limit to how far you can go before you come to an abrupt stop. But if you're going sideways instead, you can take as long as you want to stop because there's nothing in your way anymore. So the way we accomplish that is gonna be by using a roll maneuver. Well, actually, if you can move your legs fast enough to just keep your feet under you the whole time, that's gonna be the best outcome because obviously you already know how to come to a stop if you're on your feet. But if you're gonna be going all the way down, what I want you to do is use your legs to take as many extra steps as you can, keeping your knees bent. Remember, you can't absorb any impact if your knees are perfectly straight like this. You're just kind of standing on a set of stilts at that point, but you're gonna keep your knees bent. And then with every step, you're just gonna to try to use your quads to resist that downward momentum as much as possible as you continue on your way down to the ground. Once you get past that point, your next set of airbags is gonna be your arms. Now, this one can be a double-edged sword because a lot of people without any training will have a tendency to do this part incorrectly and it'll lead to them just breaking their elbow. So you have to practice this. But the main idea is that we're gonna be using our arms kind of like a set of springs to continue to reduce our downward momentum and set us up for our roll maneuver. And then just like before, like we did with our knees, whenever you land on your arms, you wanna make sure and keep your elbows bent. Once again, if you panic and you just throw your arm out in front of you with your elbow locked out like this, whenever that comes into contact with the ground and you have a bunch of weight on top of it, that's just gonna snap like a twig. So just trust your training, put your hands on the ground with your elbows bent, and then we're gonna start the next phase of the process, which is gonna be the roll. Now, learning this technique is very important to being able to fall down over and over again without suffering any major damage. So like we said before, rather than just letting all of our energy slam to the ground and come to a stop all at once, we're going to 
divert our momentum sideways so that way we can increase the amount of time and the amount of distance we have to come to a stop. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to tuck our chin down into our chest and keep it there the whole time and then roll over onto our back. Now to demonstrate how you can use this technique in every possible direction, here is some actual footage of how my girlfriend treats me on an everyday basis in which I have to employ a rolling technique in order to divert my downward momentum to being sideways. When you want to practice falling down, I'd recommend doing something similar. Just make sure you find a soft surface first, that you have plenty of room, and that you start out very slowly and you gradually work your way up to full speed. When I was practicing, I had someone push me down so that I'd be falling in a more unpredictable way, but you can practice the same thing by yourself just as well. Just remember to tuck your chin into your chest, keep your elbows and knees bent, and roll until your momentum comes to a stop. One last thing to keep in mind is that all these techniques are going to go completely out of the window if your board gets underneath you when you're falling. So whenever you come to the realization that you're about to fall, try your best to kick your board out from underneath you and get it away from you as far as possible so that way you can fall in a predictable way like you've been practicing. The three things that are going to have the biggest impact on whether you're able to execute on all this properly are going to be whether or not you're warmed up, your own personal level of athleticism, and then how much practice you've put in. So. Before you get started skateboarding, make sure you're nice and warmed up, you've done some stretches and you're feeling good and loose. And then also make sure you're skating within your ability level. So whatever trick you're working on, make sure you feel really comfortable about being able to take a fall from that speed and height. And then lastly, like we've been saying all video, make sure you put in some practice falling down beforehand. That way you'll know instinctually what to do whenever you're in that situation. And you can just rely on your muscle memory to protect you rather than assuming that you're going to have enough time to logically think through every step of the process as it's happening. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and as always, never stop improving. <laughs> nice shot, man. <laughs> that was it for sure. <laughs> Good, good hit, good hit. Oh yeah, that one, that one hurt. <laughs> Did that hurt you at all? No. Oh man, you're good at tackling.